in, but eventually it just sort of releases and opens up. And then the next key is, well, what do I do in what order and how do I do the coordinate? Well, that's my job. But you can do it a lot on your own. Okay? So that's probably enough for you. That's probably how yeah. you feel. Oh, I feel great now. And it's, it's like I have a whole a much bigger space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So bigger, okay. wider, deeper, longer, smoother. So we're done? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. Great. Mm -hmm. We have these little breathing gadgets from Germany you can breathe into. So yeah, are you talking about from what? For sleeping or for measuring your breathing? Measuring your breathing. breathing okay, thank breathing. you. That's a good question. That's a spirometer. Now, they actually, uh, a spirometer is how to measure FEV1, forced exhalation volume in one second, which is how you measure your lung volume, one of them anyway. It's the primary way. And the only problem with that is that when you force that much breath out that quickly, you actually lock up your whole breathing system. It's just like the athlete gasping and breath heaving. So if you do it several times a day, and people actually ask asthmatics to do it several times a day, that's really, I think, a guarantee to keep you on the inhalers. I don't think they know that, but I think that's what's happening. I think the more you like that, you may strengthen the diaphragm, somewhat, but you lock up the rib cage. You actually impede the ability for the lungs to get larger, for the rib cage to get larger. Uh, or I should say you can impede it. Most of the time you do impede it. So the the way I get around spirometry is with the self with my little self tests, which is a number count. I might as well share that with you. Some of you have already heard it. Now what you do is you take a big deep breath and then you count up to as high a number as you can get to on one exhale. So you go, you count very quietly, quickly, cleanly, and clearly like an auctioneer that was whispering, up to as high a number as you can get to. And this gives you a, an idea of how much breathing volume you had. If you had, a, if you had a breathing volume the size of this tent, you could get up to a very, very high number. You know, back to the pin size, you couldn't even get to one number with, the, with, with this much breath, right? So, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that if I can count up to 500 on one breath, I've got a heck of a lot more breath than the person who can count up to 12. Huh? You start counting when you start breathing in? Pardon me? You start counting? Start what? When do you count? You count. You start at the very top of the exhale. The counting actually releases air. You want it to get, don't count on your head, you count out loud because you want to move some air. Now, if you're moving air, then the other factor is how efficient is it? How efficient is that exhale? Uh, so, if I were to go, one, two, three, four, five, I'm out of breath already at five, right? But if I were to go, if I were to be stingy about it, and I were to go, one, two, three, four, five, six, I could get up to a couple hundreds. A lot of, I've got up to 250. So, and 150 is good. And uh, in fact, one of the fellows here did my test on the on the internet, and I just happened to be there watching, and all of a sudden this huge test came in. And I so I emailed it back, and I said, "That's great. What are you doing?" You know, and he told me all the different things he was doing. Well, I can improve it. In fact, I ought to mention it to him. See if he wants to. I know I can improve it because there's been nobody that I haven't been able to improve breathing on. I don't care if they play the didgeridoo, do tai chi, sing opera, or what. I can make the breathing better. So, the key issue is that breath is life, that longevity and breathing are totally interdependent, that raw foods is a major, major, major component to healthy, long life. So you put the two together, and that's what I'm doing here. This is a raw foods festival. And uh, I'm at this point, well, this week I'm 100% raw, and I love it. The only problem with raw foods is you've got to find out what you like. And in order to do that, you want to create a community around different people coming to potlucks, bring them their favorite dishes. You want to sample all the different stuff, and you want to create your own, your, your own gourmet raw foods repertoire. And when you do that, your life is going to change big time. You're going to be energetic. Last year, I was up at 5 o'clock, going like a bat all day, going to bed at 12, getting up again, you know, and loving it. I'm just loving it.
So, and it's taken me two days to get to where I'm starting to feel like I want to do that again because I had to eat stuff that I didn't want to eat. I had to. I mean, I did in the mountains where I live, which is very hard to get a raw food diet. There's, there's very few raw food people around. I need a community of raw fooders. I really do. I want a community. I don't need one, really, I guess. I could do it on my own, but I really want a raw food community. And I think it's so important what we're doing here, creating raw food communities. So pay attention to living-foods.com. Eventually, there's going to be a way to know who is doing raw foods functions all over the United States via that website. Eventually, that's going to happen. Living-foods.com. Okay? That's John Kohler's website. Uh, so, I don't know what else I can add, and if you don't have, if you have any questions, give me questions. What? What's the difference between the counting out as you exhale and using a spirometer? Good question. The matter is a matter of speed. It's a matter of speed. When you do it slowly, you don't traumatize the system. You don't tighten it up so much. If you, if you, everything gets locked up. If I, takes a long time. Also, one of the main, what, that's a great question. One of the main benefits of the, of the test that I just showed you is really, real, it's beyond a test, it's really an exercise. What happens is you're taking a big, deep breath, and then you're using that big, deep breath while it's still big. You're taking the big tank full of air in your chest and you're using it while it's still big. When you use it while it's still big, it gets used to staying big. Get it? So are you saying when we use a spirometer, you just let go? It's done in a second. It's over in a second. Literally, that's the test. FEV1 means one second. How much can you do? Okay. This exercise is not only an exercise, it's a test for how good your breathing is. All the way up. When you get in you, but you've got to get it up. I, I believe in order for it to be really significant, it needs to get up above 150. That's why it's really good. You know, but I've seen people walking around here and I've looked at their oh posture. Posture is indispensable to good breathing. Look at this guy here. Can you get a close-up on that? This guy with lousy posture. This person is powerless, apathetic, yawning, depressed, sighing, negative thoughts, collapsed, victim, undercharged. I wonder why. Right? Here. Straight. This guy's not Superman. Yeah. But he's open. See all the little arrows here? This is where breath should go. Breath goes all over. Over here, breath is going one place, down, one place. Here it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places. Here it's going a couple of places. The belly breath, the belly breath. Look at what a belly breath is. Here's the diaphragm, top down view. This is 360 degrees. It's not the belly breath. Look at all the lung tissue above this diaphragm here. See this diaphragm? Diaphragm, here's the belly breath. What happened to the side breath? What happened to the back breath? You want 100% of your breathing, you have to develop your side breath and back breath. That's listing the starboard. Little list. Ah. So, does that give you some something of an answer? Okay? Yeah, absolutely. So People that are stressed a lot will speak from the bottom half of their breath. I said use the top half, use the big part to speak with, okay? If you're using the bottom half of your breath, if you're waiting until half your breath is gone or you never get up to the top half in the first place, which is where most people are, because they're only doing, they're only breathing with two liters instead of five or six, then you're using the bottom half of the breath. Using the bottom half of the breath means you've got to breathe in more and when you have to breathe in more, there's an oxygen cost of breathing. There's also a stress factor. You have to breathe more often per minute. You're actually adding stress to the entire organism. You're making it work more. 
Which brings me to another subject. Chairs, car seats. Posture is indispensable to breathing. Well, it's how you sit, what you sit in is also indispensable to breathing. On the website, it's an article about cars and chairs, airplane seats, okay? I spell Mercedes-Benz, B-E-N-D-S. Bends you forward. Cadillacs, L-A-C-K-S, lacks proper breathing support. BMW makes breathing more work. <laughs> so be really careful about your car seats. Eventually I'm going to develop a car seat video that will show you how to redevelop your breathing and then how to redevelop the car seat so that the two of them stay, stay so that your breathing stays big and your car seat doesn't suck the breath out of you. It's not about a lumbar seat support. The lumbar has got very little to do with your thoracic vertebrae. Uh, sleeping, snoring, car seats, sitting, eating, food, raw foods. No question about it. Uh, uh, natural hygienists, you all know about natural hygienists. This is going to be into a, a video, so people need to focus on natural hygiene a lot more than they are. And uh, I very much believe in that. Uh, there are some extremists in the natural hygiene world that don't believe in supplementation. I disagree with that. I think a lot of people are in emergency and need supplementation. I do not sell supplements, but I still think that they need supplementation to get them over to the bad areas. Uh, they may have a job and a family and mortgages and things to, 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 uh, that they're responsible for, and they need to be sharp and functional. They don't have time to go detox and, and be out of it for days and weeks. So uh, uh, I totally support uh, intelligent supplementation with the idea of hopefully weaning off of it over a period of uh, reasonable period of time, perhaps even years. Uh, the more you breathe better, everything is going to work better. Breathing drives everything. There's nothing that doesn't really help. So uh, although maybe the formation of bone marrow isn't all that, but the, but the, the, the riddance of cancer certainly relates to breath, better breathing. Otto Warburg got the 1931 Nobel Prize for proving that cancer is anaerobic. It does not survive at high concentrations of oxygen. So breathing more helps everything. Drugs. I'm sorry. Uh, germs, bacteria, viruses are also anaerobic. They don't survive in a high concentration of oxygen. They die. So. Why do Qigong teachers say, I don't get sick? The, the really good ones don't. They don't get sick. People that breathe right don't get sick. So you got to eat right too. You got to put both of them together. If you want to get past, you know, to be really alive at 105, you better learn to breathe now and you better transition over to as much live foods as you can. As much live foods as you can and as soon as you can. But you're going to have detox with that. So get into it, get with a natural hygienist or somebody who really knows about that. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait a minute. She, uh, yes, over there. Could you uh, show all these techniques that you have uh, like in your class, in your personal classes? It shows some of them. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm developing more videos that show even more. Uh, the one that I have here is about is about rapid expansion of breathing. It's rapid. I'm using, I'm training people on how to use the straps on themselves as well as four key exercises around shortness of breath. I've taken an asthmatic. She was used her inhaler. I've taken many asthmatics and got rid of asthma. This particular one used her inhaler eight times that day. I worked on her for two and a half hours. Four months later, she had not touched her inhaler. The undercurrent, the underpinning of asthma, I believe, is mechanical breathing dysfunction. It's been totally overlooked. <clears throat> totally overlooked. They're going for drugs, drug surging environment. Now they're even starting to think about nutrition. Nutrition is a big factor. Big factor. But people that have bad nutrition don't all have asthma. People who are in poor environments don't all have asthma. People who have bad nutrition and poor environments together don't all have asthma. What else is there? is mechanical breathing function. And it's the quickest, fastest thing you can do to change it. It takes you a while to eat. 
it might take you not a while to get out of a lousy environment. That may not be so. That may be true, but. By and large, asthmatics in poor environments take a while for the asthma to kick in, unless it's really bad. They get into a bad environment and they have to leave. It's bad. But what I'm saying is that mechanical breathing function makes the fastest change you can make, except for getting out of a, a, a out of a room full of cyanide or something. You know, that is really bad. You know, but and, and what happens if you change your mechanical breathing function? What happens to the asthma? I am here to say that the majority of it will lessen to the point where it becomes much more manageable, if not disappears, but at least very much more manageable. Emphysema is a different issue. Bronchitis is in the same world as asthma. Uh, you need a lot more cleansing. Nutrition becomes almost indispensable with chronic bronchitis. Cleansing, what do you do? And I've got one of the most popular pages on my website is about bronchitis. It's a huge article that has to do with nutrition, and then I hold them in and say, listen, if you've had bronchitis more than once in your life, probably your breathing system has tightened up enough to where you should consider opening it back up again if you want the longevity that good breathing comes with, or that comes with good breathing. So, bronchitis, uh, rather, so asthma and COPD, which is like the potpourri of all the other things that are going on with with, with breathing that they really don't have specific words for is helped tremendously with mechanical breathing dysfunction with mechanical I'm sorry with mechanical breathing techniques uh, I had a man come from Oklahoma he got on the website he called me I had some spot open the next day he and his wife had driven from Oklahoma a thousand miles with his oxygen tank we changed his breathing I added about his estimation was about 20 percent in four days in his breathing now, when you only have 17%, that's almost doubling your breathing volume in four days. Then he had to go back because uh, the medical system was, wasn't paying for it. He was paying for it, and that was as much money as he had. So, the lack of understanding about healthy breathing in the medical world is rampant. If you ask a medical doctor what healthy breathing looks like, feels like, sounds like, you're not going to get much of an answer unless they've been to my website. Uh, they didn't teach them that in, high, in, in college, in, in medical school. Uh, you know, so it's not really their fault unless somebody tells them, you should learn this, and then they shine it on. Then it's their fault. At that point, they've been, you know, it's been, it's, it's been, now, Andrew Wheel, MD, Harvard, uh, there are a lot of a lot of enlightened MDs in this country. They just uh, there's not enough of them. Andrew says breathing is one of the most important things you you can learn about. So he's got some CDs that are out there, and it's they're nice. They're nice entry level awa awa conscious consciousness awakening uh, CDs about breathing. They don't teach you very much about breathing or how to do it any better, but at least they're going to awaken a lot of people into the importance of breathing. I think it's very valuable. So. Uh, I just want to encourage all of you to look into it. I have a manual, I have a breathing kit, I've got videos, I've got audios, CDs, uh, a big website that's about 500 pages. That I, I think I may have said I put in about 10,000 hours in three years uh, of no social life. <laughs> Getting tired of that. <laughs> so, tired of being a hermit. Uh, and I want to get out there see people and work on more people so opt in uh, I'm gonna be here till tomorrow night and then I'm gone I'm gonna go to a breathwork conference in Wisconsin where I'm presenting there for the 8th International Breathwork Conference the first one in the United States and the eighth in the world uh, and uh, I think that's probably about it it's it's getting close to uh, getting close to closing time so I want to thank all of you for coming and uh, if you have any more questions, you can address them to me at the booth. I, I encourage you to, to do a half an hour mini session with me. Uh, it's going to change your breathing right now uh, to the better. And thank you. Thank you very much. Namaste.
Well, I hope you enjoyed learning more about breathing and some of the benefits of our training opportunities. Joining us are some of the world's top physicians, nurses, and physical therapists, behavioral and alternative health specialists, personal trainers, vocal coaches, and school administrators, teachers, and tutors. We hold the school trainings worldwide in an area like this. It's near the Great Smoky Mountains in western North Carolina. To live happy, healthy, long, and fulfilling lives, one must breathe deeply, completely, easily, and in balance. Like colleague Dennis Lewis reminds us, breathing really is a metaphor for life. Please join us. Develop your breathing and add our skills to your skills. Learn how to become a leader in a field that all too few health, coaching, or educational professionals fully understand and virtually everyone needs. As a result of training with us, you and probably almost everyone you work with will look better feel more rested, get more done, and have more fun. I absolutely guarantee it. I'm Mike White. Goodbye for now.